We all get old someday, if we're lucky, but we don't really act like it. Our society is not terribly welcoming to its older members. As we age, our bodies and minds are increasingly classified as no longer normal or ideal. This narrative of decline contributes to the isolation experienced by many older people. Does it have to be this way? What if we looked at old age in a radically different context? That's the goal of my dissertation, examining how old age was understood within European monasteries during the 12th and 13th centuries. Using a variety of monastic sources, sermons, letters, miracle stories, and so on, I examine how monks reflected on the aging process, how communities responded to the needs of older monks, and how the role of the abbot, the leader of the community, transformed with age. Modern scholarship on monasticism has emphasized the bonds of mutual responsibility forged among monks and between monks and their abbots. My research analyzes the importance of age in those relationships. For example, was old age primarily characterized by isolation or community? Were monks and abbots released from social obligations as they grew older or not? I found that monastic authors present aging and any accompanying illness or disability as a source of positive common identity. Here's one example from the 12th century up on the slide. Gerard, a monk of Clairvaux, is near the end of his life, and he has a vision in which the famous Saint Bernard, who had died in 1153, came to visit him, with angelic face, but in the same physical condition that he had had before he died. Bernard retained his walking stick, an earthly remedy, in his heavenly afterlife. He looked his age and was glorified for it. His appearance echoed Gerard's own condition on his deathbed and validated his suffering. Monks and abbots might receive some accommodations due to advanced age or illness, but they were not excused from all responsibility to their communities. For example, the Scottish abbot Waltheof uh, had difficulty walking as he grew older. He nonetheless visited everyone in the infirmaries daily, sometimes supported by the arms of his monks, who helped him make the rounds and keep fulfilling his duties as leader of the community. Monks were embedded in a network of community care, and they gave and received this care reciprocally. The idea prevalent today, that independence is a hallmark of successful aging, is nowhere to be found. No monk lived independently, regardless of age. Let's come back to today. So many of the questions that medieval monks wrote about remain familiar. Questions like, who is responsible for providing health care? How can we ensure that later life is as fulfilling as possible? Medical treatment has its place here, but there's more to the experience of aging than just medicine. And by examining these alternative cultural attitudes toward old age, we're better equipped to answer those bigger questions.